Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Mathis. I'm a developer advocate at Timescale. And today we're gonna to talk about how to get your AWS IoT core data into Timescale. And the way we're gonna do this is by using a Lambda function. And I know we talked about Lambda functions in the previous episode in this series. Um, and this video is gonna be largely the same, but instead of using the API gateway as your Lambda trigger, we're gonna be using AWS IoT core. The way this works is that you can set up um, a rule that makes it so that every time a message gets published onto your MQTT topic, uh, a Lambda function gets triggered with that event. And then within that Lambda function, we can take that event, we can add a timestamp to it, and then insert that into our time series database. Do note that in this video, I won't be talking about how to register things to AWS IoT Core, nor talk about how certificates work, or even talk about how to upload your Lambda function. As you'll see, the code we're using for the Lambda function is nowhere near uh, production ready or, or battle tested, but it's just to give you a rough idea of how you might approach this in your own environment. So with that said, let's get started. So before we can get started with creating our AWS IoT core rule and our Lambda function, we need to have some kind of uh, script or actor that publishes messages onto our MQTT topic. Uh, and in this case, I took a sample script from um, AWS and I modified it slightly uh, to where it generates uh, an array consisting of a sine wave. Um, it connects to the MQTT endpoint. Uh, and then later in the script, it essentially iterates over that array uh, and sends every individual message uh, onto that MQTT topic. Here I have a shell script that exports some environment variables for that script. And the most important one here is the MQTT topic. In my case, I'm using uh, my dash topic slash thing. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this. We're gonna go to uh, the AWS IoT Core test client. We're gonna enter our topic into the topic filter and then subscribe to that topic. Then we go back to our script and let's actually launch this script. So we're gonna do Python 3. Uh, main.py and as you can see it will start sending messages and if everything is correct we can see that we're receiving these messages here too let us now create a rule so that every time we do get one of these messages we can trigger a lambda function so let's go to message routing and then click on rules we can create a rule let's call it time scale underscore insert click on next and here we need to provide a sql statement and while this might look weird at first uh, we're essentially just writing a query for every single message that will trigger our Lambda function. So in our case, we want every message to trigger a Lambda function. So we'll do select everything from, and then in quotes, our topic. This is SQL, so if you wanna do some more funky magic, like where value is bigger than 10, you could do that. But in our case, we're not going to, we're just gonna keep it very simple. I will click on next. And here we need to define an action. So we're gonna click on this, and then click on Lambda, and then it will ask us to select the Lambda function. Obviously we haven't created one, so we're gonna click on create Lambda function. But before we actually create our Lambda function, let's write it in Python. We're gonna start with importing psycho-pg2, which is gonna be our Postgres library. Then we're gonna add a variable for our connection string. So we're gonna do connection string, and we're gonna leave this blank for now. And we're gonna build our connection. So we'll do con equals psycho-pg2 dot connection. We're gonna pass in our connection string. And then we need a cursor. So cursor is equal to con.cursor. Once we have that, we can actually start writing our actual Lambda handler. So we'll do def handler. And this takes in uh, an event and uh, context. And then I always like to print out the event. This is always useful uh, so you can go back and see uh, what the event was in case your function crashed uh, or something similar. Then we're gonna put this in a try statement and we're gonna do accept exception as E and we're gonna print this exception out, print E and exit uh, with a one code if something does go wrong. And here we're just gonna do uh, cursor.execute and then uh, our insert statement. So we're gonna do uh, use an F string here. We're gonna say insert into sensor in the uh, time and value row with the time value of now. And then the event, which we saw was just a float, uh, but it was encased in a string. So we're gonna do a float like this and then event. And then we're gonna close this like that. And then here we're gonna do con.commit. We're gonna return. And the last thing we need to do is fill in this connection string. So let's go to timescale and create a service. So we're here in timescale. We're gonna create a service in US East one. We're gonna give this some power and then click on create service. Then while this is loading, we're gonna copy the PSQL statement 
and open up a terminal. So we're gonna paste our psql statement in here, then we should be connected to our database, and then we're gonna create our sensor table. So we're gonna do a create table sensor like this, and we have a time row, which is of timestamp tz, and then a value, which is double precision. And then once we've created our table, we need to convert this into a hyper table. So we're gonna do select create hyper table of the sensor table, and then the time column like this. Cool, now I'm gonna copy this string here, which is essentially our connection string, then go back into our Python script and add this in. And we're done with writing our Python function. I'm going to upload my Lambda function as a Docker file, simply because it's easiest with the uh, dependencies. And I have a Docker file right here and a build script. So let's open up a terminal and run um, build dot sh when that's done pushing to ecr we can go back to our lambda dashboard click on container image give our function a name i'm going to call it time scale dash insert uh, then browse images click on our time scale insert repository click on the latest tag select the image uh, select the right uh, architecture in my case arm 64 and click create function once our function has been created with the right image, we can go back to AWS IoT, refresh this and select our function, timescale insert, uh, and then click on next, uh, and then create. And then it should have created the timescale insert rule, uh, which should be active with the correct topic. So then if we go back to our uh, publisher script from the beginning and run this, python3 main.py, uh, we should start to see the messages come in. We can go uh, back to our uh, psql here and do uh, select everything from sensor and as you can see those messages are coming in so if we repeat this command we can see that in the meantime uh, there's a lot more messages what i always like to do is plot out my time series data in grafana so you can actually see what's going on so let's do uh, select everything from sensor like this and then if we zoom into our graph here a little bit, we can see a really nice sine wave. So as expected, everything is working great. We can go to our uh, Lambda function here, click on monitor, and then we should be able to see some graphs showing our uh, invocations here. And as you can see, we're currently at 120, which is about two a second, which correlates to the amount of messages that we're actually sending. Before I end the video, I'd like to talk about why TimeScale is such a great database for time series data and IoT data in particular. So here we have our sensor table, which is a hyper table with about 104 million rows in it. And that totals up to be about 19 gigabytes. As you can see, we have compression disabled. Compression is a native feature that comes with time scale uh, out of the box and is really, really easy to configure and can save you a literal boatload of money. So let's enable compression and see how much we can compress this 19 gigabytes to. So first we need to enable compression for the sensor table, after which we can add a compression policy. So we'll do select add compression policy on the table sensor. And we want an interval of let's say five days. So as soon as our data gets to be older than five days, it will automatically be compressed. So let's press enter and let TimeScale do its thing. And we'll look back in about 10 to 15 minutes to see how much we've compressed our data by. So we've come back after a while, and as you can see, TimeScale was able to compress the about 19 gigabytes to 630 megabytes, uh, which as you can see, it says here is 97% saved in storage. This is especially great with the new usage-based cost billing where you're only paying for what you're actually using. So in this case, we're literally saving 97% in costs. So that is how you take MQTT data from AWS IT Core and insert it into TimeScale using a Lambda function. If you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below in the comment section. If you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe. My name is Mathis, and I'll see you next time.